No, it's politics, and I think that's one thing that they don't teach in, in film schools and stuff. They don't understand. I mean, new screenwriters coming up don't understand that. Look, there's there are rules that everyone says there are, and then there's rules that nobody tells you there are until you get slapped across the face with those new rules. And you are a perfect example, and Paul's a perfect example of that, that things happen, especially when egos get involved, especially yeah. when big names get involved. And, and a lot of times they're like, well, who's that? Well, that's an ant. Let's just crush that and move that out of the way. It, right. it does happen. It does happen. It's unfortunate. It does happen, and it happens far too often. I mean, you know, compared to a lot of what people go through, you know, at least my name is on it. And at least I did. Yeah, get oh, absolutely. You actually have one well, of the you know, success stories. Having said that, I mean, you know, that's, it's just, you know, it's funny. I'll do a little segue here. So we'll move <laughs> on. But, uh, one of the things I talk about, and it's only kind of recently come to me, you know, it's interesting teaching because when you're writing, it's, you know, I assume it's like somebody who's a good tennis player or whatever. It's intuitive, right? They've been doing it so long. And then when you teach it, you have to really break it down when you're trying to explain mm -hmm. to somebody else, you know? How, how it works and so I like teaching because you always kind of get new insights for as long as I've been at this I'm still like learning stuff myself you know mm -hmm. there's it's never ending um, but one of the things I've recently kind of um, concluded or at least you know contemplated is that I really do believe that in a way stories are about justice because I think everyone feels like an underdog and everybody recognizes that life is not fair it's just not and yet, and yet there's something really deep in us, like primal, honestly, almost that wants to believe it is <laughs> that, you know, is so like, we just like expect it's going to be, but of course it's not. And that's part of the function story serve, right? Because we want to see people get what they deserve. We want to see the hero get what he deserves. We want to believe there's justice in the world. We want to believe, you know, we want to see the villain get what he deserves. And, you know, and, and that leads to the whole zeitgeist thing about superheroes now, because I think everybody feels so powerless. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, well, I mean, I, I always use this as an analogy, because what you just said is a perfect analogy for arguably my favorite film of all time, Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, you saw Shank Redemption. I always people are like, what is about that movie that, you know, I saw that movie when I was 20 something where I, I literally probably still thought John claude Van Damme was the greatest actor of all time. So there wasn't a, a sophistication there to see a good story. But yet even my high school and college friends were liking that movie. I'm like, what is about that story? Like on paper, it's a horrible title. It's like it's not horrible, horrible worst, horrible. worst marketing, worst marketing campaign ever. I mean, it's about, you know, in the middle, it, it just, there's nothing appealing from on the surface about that film. But yet I always tell people that I think it's, I think people connect with it so much is because it's an analogy for life where you are Andy Dufresne and you feel like you, your, your life sometimes might feel like you're in prison or that it's not fair and then you get beaten constantly for 20 years and then he finally escapes and it's just this cathartic thing. It's and I, totally I, cathartic. Yeah. I, yeah. I, so that's why I just thought of that when you were saying that because it was, I feel it's very much, what do you think about it? I'm assuming you like that. If not, you're dead inside. I, and no, can't I really did. I, <laughs> I haven't seen it as many times as you have. I remember it. I remember it very fondly, but you're absolutely right that it is a lot of people's favorite movie. Like, you mm -hmm. know, if you're on Twitter and people name things, that movie comes up a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so it really did strike a chord with people. And, and yeah, getting back to what I was saying, I mean, I think the most powerful people in the world think of themselves as underdogs. You know, it's all relative, right? When it's they all perspective. go into theater, I think they identify with the underdog. And yeah. it's funny, you know that um, poem, and I don't know who it's by, I should know, but um, uh, into each life some rain must fall, you know that saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I only just recently came across the line that precedes that, which I think is really lovely, which is thy fate is the common fate of all. Into each life some rain must fall. That's awesome. But like you're not gonna be exempt. You are not gonna be exempt, and it's gonna suck, you know? <laughs> and so we yeah. all have our, our crosses to bear, so to speak. So yeah, I, I do think stories really um, speak to that and the desire to believe there is some, I mean, you know, you look at, we build temples to justice, Supreme Court, whatever. We want to believe that that matters, mm -hmm. even though so often it seems not to.